So now let's have a look at how we would configure the routes in SAP. As you can see here, I am in the customizing, but let's go into SPRO. So I'm going to type in the transaction SP, oops, forward slash SPRO. It's the same customizing object. I'm going to the IMG here and the root configuration is actually in logistics execution shipping uh, basic shipping functions and root so it's in shipping basic shipping functions and root and when I open it you can see here define root root determination which is how we determine the root um, so let's have a look at how we define the root first before we look at how we determine a root. You can see here is the screen here we have all of the roots uh, and we have various details. There are stages in the roots but for the purpose here I'm not going to cover it that's more used in the shipment functionality. So for the time being let's have a look at how we would configure root and some of the values in a root itself. So let's go to a particular root and let's have a look. The first thing you'll see on here is the root description. Now it's important for you to understand that a root has a particular dis name and it's important before you start configuring new roots to have an idea on your naming convention. And what I mean by this is that you must have a system where a person looks at their root and instantly knows what it means. So for example, you might say, ah, the first two digits might define the country in which it's shipping into. And the last digit might mean the duration or, or some sort of coding like that. So for example, you could have UK0001, which means that I'm shipping to the UK and it's one day uh, delivery time. So before you start creating the routes, make sure you already have in your mind so it's easy to identify the route by its name. We then have the shipping type, the shipment pre-leg and the post-leg and including the distance here. And all of these values are actually used in the shipping process rather than in the delivery process. So the shipping type and all of these will be pulled in to the shipment based on the route. Next we have this flag relevant for transport which means that is this route relevant to be put in a shipment? If you unflag it then you can't put any deliveries that have this route in a shipment. Particularly useful if you have returns or inbound deliveries or something that you never ever want in a shipment. This is where you would un you would flag it so that uh, it's not you can't accidentally pull it into a shipment. And finally, we have this value here under scheduling called transit time. Now, transit time actually means how long is the journey expressed in the number of days. And on the side there, you can see the factory calendar which says how many days are working. So let's take a moment to have a look at how SAP actually uses the transit time or how it calculates the transit time and determine the dates. So in this calendar, let's assume I have a route and this route has a five day transit time. So five days. And what SAP would do is, let's say I ship something on a Monday, it will calculate the Monday to Tuesday, so Monday to Tuesday, as one transit day. And this is the same from Tuesday to Wednesday, so one day, Wednesday to Thursday, Thursday to Friday. So one day, one day, one day here, one day from Thursday to Friday so as you can see four days and then Friday to Saturday that is one more day which means that the product which is five day 
which means the five day transit time which means the product arrives on a Saturday the pretty pretty simple pretty straightforward so that means that if I were to ship it on a Monday and until Friday it is four days and the Friday to Saturday is one extra day now that is if Saturday is a working day now what happens if for example this weekend the 13th and the 14th was a holiday and this is expressed in the factory calendar that you have what happened if you ship the product let's say on the 8th of December so 8th to 9 so it's two days as you can see three days four days now so one two three four days because it can't deliver on Saturday and Sunday it actually jumps and tries to deliver it on the Monday so that will mean five days so see how it jumps over the working days uh, sorry it jumps over the holidays and only uses the working days to calculate the transit time and finally let's assume that middle of the week as you can see here Christmas Day and uh, the 24th let's say it's a holiday so one day so the 23rd the next day is actually 26 that all is counted as one day yeah so the 24th and 25th is a holiday yep so the 23rd to 26 is one day 26 to 27 is one day if the, the Saturday is a working day etc yeah. so you can see here how holidays or Saturday and Sundays or certain days if you can't ship something you put it in the calendar and SAP would skip those days Before I forget to mention, uh, I just want to revisit this distance and this distance is actually used in the shipment module either for reporting or shipment cost calculation because you can calculate the shipment, how much a shipment would cost based on the distance. So we see here as we saw how we calculated the transit time is the duration of the route expressed in days the travel duration is how you express it in hours not usually used but it's there next is the planning lead time in days and if I go next is the planning lead time in hours oops next one right the allowed total weight is just how much weight you would allow on this route that's not particularly used and you can like pull that value in into a shipment if you wanted to and finally here's a factory calendar we talked about and that's being used when you want to calculate uh, the dates um, with with relevance to the transit time so now let's say I want to create a new route so let me go back um, and let me just select put in the route that I want to copy from um, one two press enter so I select this one I press the copy and as you can see I put in three days as a description and I also put in just an A as a start of my naming convention I put transit time 3 and I put the cal calendar you want now you can see here what it does is it asks whether I wanted to copy the route schedule and by default I'm just going to say no um, as I explained before, the route schedule, the route state, sorry, the route stages, is used more primarily in shipping. Uh, I'm not going to cover it here, so I'm going to just say no for now. So if now I go ahead and I save this route, the system will say, "Give me my transport number." I say yes. That's the transport I've created. So now this transport is done. So here is I've defined my route and under route determination we'll have a look at how we are going to define or we are going to determine the route we've created a route now it's time to 
determine the route or put in the rules in order so that when I create the sales order it now knows how to determine the route so in the screen you can see how the system determines the route either on an order level or on a delivery level the delivery is by weight also so let's have a look at our shipping point 2400 and the destination country Italy and what happens when I press enter is the system will look at the shipping point pick up the departure from and departure zone from the shipping point it'll use that as its selection and as you can see I want the receiving zone 002 which is where my, where my customer is so if I go in here let's have a look at the details I can now see that for this shipping condition and this transport group so this shipping condition 01 the transport group 0001 I will determine this route for ship from 01 to receiving zone 02 I will have route 12 so let's say I wanted to add a new entry and I just select all three I copy it and I say my shipping condition is 09 I want it to determine the route I created before so um, A00012 yep so press enter oops I have to put the shipping condition sorry put the shipping condition here so this means that what this means is that when I ship from Italy 0001 where the destination on the customer master is the transport zone is 002 the shipping condition 09 it will always determine the route A0012 so now I've created my new route entries let's go back and let's create a new sales order and try changing the shipping condition and see how this affects the route determination so I'm going to go to a sales order that I've created before and this is the sales order I've created so if I go in if I go to item number three you can clearly see the route in the shipping tab the route is 12 if I go to the header level if I go to the shipping tab I can see the shipping condition is 01 so let's change it to 09 the system will then say do you want to determine the route I say yes it's re doing some redetermination if I go to item 3 you can see that the shipping point and the route has changed it has changed to our new route A000012 as we have configured before